So in Python, you have mutable and immutable objects, but what does it really mean? In today's video, you'll learn all you need to know about it. So let's see a few important things that will make the difference between mutable and immutable objects easier to grasp. Basically, when you assign a value to a variable, the value is stored somewhere in memory. It can sort of see its location using the edit function. So let's say you've got my string, this variable containing a string object, okay? You can see the ID of that object using this. So if you run that, you can see this number, which is the ID of the of this object, okay? And this va variable points to this ID, which is where this object is located in memory, okay? And this is the same for all the objects. So basically, the ID in simple words is a representation of the address in memory where the actual object is stored, okay? So whenever you use the variable my string, from now on, Python will go and get it from that specific address in memory, okay? So if we do something like my string two is equal to my string and then we print the id of my string 2 like that we'll see that the id we get is the same so now basically we have two variables okay that point to the same exact object in memory and another way to see if two variables point to the same address is using the keyword is so print my string is my string 2 like that and if we run that, you'll see that this is true, of course, because they've got the same ID, okay? So knowing this, let's talk about mutable and immutable objects. An immutable object is an object that cannot be modified. So tuples, strings, integers, floats, frozen sets, bytes objects, ranges, and booleans are immutable objects. Hopefully I've listed all of them. If not, as a beginner, you're probably not going to use the one I forgot, right? Okay. So let's actually delete all of this and assign this tuple to the variable my tuple, okay? And if we print the ID, we get the ID of my tuple, okay? And of course, there is no way of modifying these elements inside. So you cannot do something like my tuple zero equals something like that because this would throw an error, okay? So you cannot do that. So with immutable objects, we cannot just keep the tuple and which is a sort of container and change its content. We need to create a completely new tuple. And if we want, assign it to the same variable, okay? We can do something like my tuple one, two, three, four, okay? And if we print the ID, something like that, you see that we get two different IDs, okay? Because we've assigned a new tuple to this variable. So now this object has a different ID than this object. Of course, okay, they are two separate objects. So in a few words, when you assign something new to a variable, Python creates a new object in memory. But just a side note for you nerds out there, when we run Python as a script, as I'm doing here, if we assign an immutable object like a tuple to a variable, and we already have that tuple stored in another variable, Python will use the same object to save memory. Okay, and this is so clever. So what it means that here we've got already this tuple. If you were to create my tuple two and give it the same exact content, as you can see, then Python will use the same object. As you can see, you get the same exact ID. And this is because we're running this as a block, okay? So all of this is a block. Python immutable mutable.py is run as a block, as a complete block. So when we create tuple one here, there is not an existing tuple one, two, three, okay, in memory. So Python creates a new object. But then when we create my tuple two and we give it the same value as my tuple, Python sees that there is already an object with this value that is the same as this one and it uses that object instead of wasting memory for the two tuples, okay? So it doesn't use two tuples and then let's say you had like 100 of them, there would be 100 tuples in memory. But as this is an immutable object, it doesn't matter if all of them point to the same object in memory because nothing can modify it. And later on, I'll show you that things change when it comes to mutable objects, okay? And by the way, 
if you're doing this in the Python interactive shell, so here, we run Python here, directly from the interactive shell, you'll get two different IDs, okay? Because Python doesn't run all of the code in one single block. So let's see, it runs this, and this is a block, and it creates this object. Then we print the ID, okay? So we've got the ID. Then you do my tuple two, the same. And Python, in this case, runs this as a different block. So it doesn't see that there is already an object in memory with this value because these are two separate blocks. And if you print the ID, my tuple two, as you can see, you got a different result, okay? Because they are not in the same block. So keep that in mind. And also keep in mind that usually numbers less than 257 and strings less than 20 characters long are cached and they are always the same object, even in the interactive shell, okay? So let's say you had like num1, 10, num2, 10, and we did the same thing as we did here with the tuples. So we assigned the same value to different variables. But in this case, if we were to see the ID of num1 and the ID of num2, you can see that you get the same exact ID, okay? So for little numbers, little strings, you get the same ID always, okay? But this is fine because, you know, they are immutable, so there's nothing to worry about, okay? Of course, this is not set in stone because it depends on the implementation, on the Python implementation, and you should not use the is keyword or the IDs to compare to objects, okay? But the classic double equals. We're just using IDs to properly understand how it works under the hood, basically. Let's actually exit, okay? So immutable objects are really useful if you want to be sure that nothing can change their content. So for example, when we have a list of things and we want to make sure its content doesn't change by mistake, for example, we would use a tuple for that, okay? But what about mutable objects? So the content of a mutable object, let's actually delete that, the content of a mutable object can be changed without creating a new object. And we can demonstrate this by using the ID function again. So a mutable object could be a list, dictionary, set, bytes array, and it should be it actually. Let's say we've got a list, one, two, just a simple list, and we want to print the ID of this list. Okay, something like that. Then we change the first element, like 100, and then we duplicate this and we print the ID again, okay? And let's actually also print the list itself so we can see that we've got a different number. So if you run that, you can see that you've got the same ID before and after, and you've got 100 instead of one, okay? So basically the location of the list didn't change. And the same thing is valid for all the other mutable objects such as dictionaries. So you can change the content of a mutable object without assigning a new value to the variable. And this is of course better in terms of performance because Python doesn't actually create a new list in memory. It just adds or removes what it needs to add or remove, but the actual list in memory doesn't actually change. It doesn't write the whole list every time, okay? In this case, even if you're running this code in a block, when it comes to mutable objects, Python always creates a new object, okay? Because of course, you don't want to add something to a list and find that also in the other list as they are mutable and it doesn't make sense, okay? So if we go back to the example, let's actually read that. We had like a tuple like that and now we've got a list. We print the ID of this list like that. Then we get the same copy and paste that like this and we do my list one, my list one, okay? And if we run that, we get two different ideas. You've got 85 here, 80 here, so they are not the same, okay? Just to make sure you, you notice that. So I like immutable objects like tuples where Python uses the same object when we assign the same value to a different variable. In this case, Python always creates a new object for each list, okay? Even if they are the same, as you can see, you've got the same list, okay? Because of course you can change the content of one list and you don't want the other list to change as well. So I don't want to change my list, the first element of my list uh, and see the change in my list one, okay? Another important thing for those of you who are still watching, by the way, leave a comment down below if you're still here because I definitely want to see who the real nerds are. So if a tuple contains a mutable object as one of its elements, unexpected things can happen, okay? And I'm gonna show you that. So let's say I've got a tuple, something like my tuple, 
And then I've got first element, a string, immutable. Then a number, immutable, an integer. Then a list, mutable. Okay. For Python, this tuple is just a list of IDs, and the only thing it cares about is that these three IDs don't change. Okay, let's see an actual visual representation to make things clearer. So you've got your tuple, my tuple actually, and then let's actually make up a few IDs, like this, this, this. These are just numbers that I just made up. Okay, so this is for this, this is for this, and this is for this. If we try to change one of those values by doing something like my tuple to, for example, equals new value, okay? Python doesn't allow that because Python, after this change, we see something like this. We see a different ID here and it doesn't like that because this is a tuple. It wants to see the same IDs as before, okay? So it doesn't allow that. Let's actually comment this out. Okay, but now the unexpected behavior, if we change something inside the list, so inside of here, okay, as we saw earlier, the idea of the list doesn't actually change, okay? So the representation of the tuple currently is this one, okay? So we've got this is our tuple right now, okay? If we change the first element of the list, for example, so my tuple, two, which is the list, and then zero, and we assign 100 to it, Python will actually allow that. So if we print the tuple, you'll see that you get 100 here, okay? Why? Because basically the tuple is still like this. The tuple is still like this because the IDs inside the tuple didn't actually change. As you can see, you've got the same ID, the same ID, the same ID, okay? Because the ID of the list didn't change. You just changed the content. So, so the IDs inside the list itself changed because this is now 100, so it's got a different ID, okay? But the actual ID of the list itself didn't change, so the tuple is still the same for Python, and this is all it cares about, okay? It cares about that the tuple's direct elements have the same IDs as before, okay? So really important to be aware of that because it's really easy to think that you're safe, I'm using a tuple, this is immutable, it's stuff like that, but it's immutable only on the surface, as you can see, okay? So if you use a tuple just for immutable objects, you are safe. If you have immutable objects, that just be aware of that, okay? There you have it, but don't stop now. You have already a new video with something more to learn about Python on the screen. Go and watch it. You definitely won't be disappointed.